The state of Texas, more specifically the Republicans that run the state of Texas, have essentially went full anti-freedom um, with this new abortion ban. So I have an article from NPR that basically tells you all you need to know. So the title of the article is Texas law that bans abortion before many women know that pregnant takes effect. So legislation banning abortions after about six weeks is now the law of the land in Texas, effectively ending Roe versus Wade protections in the state. Now, of course, for those of you that don't know, Roe versus Wade was a Supreme Court um, case that was settled in 1973 that basically ruled that women have the right to an abortion. And this law essentially goes against that. OK, um, in a move that surprised some high court watchers, the U.S. Supreme Court didn't act on an emergency request to stop the law from taking effect by midnight Tuesday. It allowed the policy to go ahead and to go ahead despite court challenges. On Wednesday, President Biden called the law extreme and said it blatantly violates the constitutional right to abortion, adding that his administration will protect and defend that right. I'll get into that in just a second. The Texas law passed in May bans all abortions in the state after about six weeks of pregnancy, well before many women even know they're pregnant. That's very important, okay? Because 85% uh, of women that get abortions get it after six weeks. Um, the policy conflicts with the Supreme Court uh, precedents, which prohibit states from banning abortions before fetal viability, usually between 22 and 24 weeks of pregnancy. Texas new law is one of the most strict abortion bans in the nation. It also allows private citizens to, and this is this is my favorite part right here. Listen to this. The, this, this ban allows private citizens to sue abortion providers and anyone else who helps a woman obtain an abortion, including those who give the, a woman uh, a ride to a clinic, such as, you know, just a family member or a friend, a, a fucking Uber driver can get sued for this shit. Whether you work for Lyft, it doesn't matter. OK, uh, uh, including those who give uh, or provide financial assistance in obtaining an abortion. Private citizens who bring these suits don't need to show any connection to those they are suing. You could just be a rando that has a problem with somebody. If they prevail, the law entitles them to a minimum of ten thousand dollars in damages plus attorney fees abortion provider said that if it remains on the books it would block the vast majority of abortion patients from obtaining services in texas although the law has not gone into effect legal challenges are coming um and this is biden's statement the texas law will significantly will significantly impair women's access to the health care they need, particularly for communities of color and individuals with low income, by saying a statement. And outrageously, it, it uh, deputizes private citizens to bring lawsuits against anyone who they believe has helped another person get an abortion, which might even include family members, health care workers, front desk staff at a health care clinic or strangers with no uh, connection to the individual. Now, uh, Biden, what Biden said there is uh, completely correct. So it does deputize uh, the citizenry. Like, what the fuck? I mean, you could just be a rando and be like, hey, I, you know, I'm, I, I think I got to sue this guy or this woman because she went to go get an abortion. I also got to sue the guy because the guy drove the woman to the place to get the abortion. What the fuck? You could really like up in somebody's life or financial situation with this bullshit. It's insane. And also what Biden said there, it will significantly impair access to health care, um, particularly for communities of color. And individuals with, with low income. So, when it terms to when, when it comes to who mostly gets an abortion, uh, believe it or not, I actually didn't know this uh, until relatively recently. It's actually more affluent people. So people that are, are more well off have more money, and it kind of makes sense because um, you know if you're uh, better well off and you have the ability, then it's easier for you to get an abortion, right? And so it disproportionately cracks down on you know, minority populations and people that just don't have a lot. So it's also an, an issue along class lines, you know, because the more affluent people can just leave the state whenever they want and go somewhere else where, you know, abortion laws are lax or, you know, whatever the case. And even if they do get sued for having an abortion, they can just pay off the lawsuit because they have so much fucking money. It doesn't matter. You know, it's like chump change to them. So it's it's an issue along class lines as well as um, among, you know, racial and ethnicity lines. But the angle that I want to take this, and I've seen many people take different angles, such as the ones that I just proposed. But as I said in the beginning of the video, this is 
an anti-freedom ban right here. You know, the Republican Party, and, and you know, I feel like Noam Chomsky, I, I struggle to call them a party. It's quite amazing to watch, you know, how they act and how they go about um, persuading people to come to their side and to believe the, the shit that they want you to believe and believe in their legislation, which is always awful for the mass of people. But they claim to be the party of freedom. You know, the party where you can do what you want. They crack down on political correctness. They don't. And they claim, you know, to want freedom for every individual. It's it's all a lie. It's all a farce. It's all delusion. This is the right to an abortion, in my view, is freedom. You know, you're free to get an abortion. You know, and what they're doing here is they're passing on their beliefs because, you know, a lot of these people are Christian fundamentalists or maybe just on principle. They don't believe in getting an abortion. Right. And I, of course, I have my own views on abortion as well. But that's not the point. The point is, is that they're deliberately depriving a large portion of the population of uh, certain freedoms. And the argument goes, you know, as it, you know, when it, I mean, there's endless examples of this, but for example, let's take labor, for example, labor unions, Republicans are so, and many Democrats as well, you can't throw them to the wayside because they're all corrupt at the end of the day. But we're talking about Republicans here. They're so anti-union. And when you ask them why, you know, they don't support unions, the first thing that they'll say is, well, freedom, the American people should be able to choose, you know, the freedom to whether or not they want to join the union. Well, they, they do have the freedom. You just want to make it harder for them to join the union, which is why they have these right to work laws in a lot of these uh, conservative states, which actually is like right to work for less money because workers in states that have right to work laws, in fact, make less money than those that don't. And it's also more difficult to join the union and the whole uh, I mean, the whole shtick. It, the same thing goes with the healthcare argument. You know, you argue for universal healthcare. They'll say, "Oh, it's imp it's impeding on your freedom. You'll be less free under a Medicare for all system." Why? Why? You get to choose your doctor. You can go wherever you want to go. Uh, it's paid through tax dollars. Why? How is that impeding on your freedom? Under our current system, you're, it's anti-freedom. They have to tell you where to go. Maybe this is covered. Maybe this isn't. You can't choose your doctor. A lot of people's uh, healthcare is through their employer. That's that's anti-freedom. And so, I mean, a lot of the things that they believe and advocate for is completely contradictory. And this is just the latest example. I mean, the party that says that they're so, you know, I mean, I, 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 like I said, I have endless examples. But on the subject of drugs, on the subject of specifically marijuana, how many of these uh, Republican politicians are drug warriors? Just, oh, no, we can't have we can't legalize weed. We can't legalize anything. But isn't that freedom as well? The freedom to be able to take a substance and alter your state of mind for a certain period of time and not hurting anybody else. You just want to engage in recreational practices with drugs that you may like to partake in. But they don't want you to have the freedom to do that. And as I said before, this is the latest example. Um, hopefully something happens with this. But And I, I almost forgot, I can't end this video b by absolving the Democrats. So... Uh, I'll end the video with this. The Democrats are largely the blame for this situation that we're in. So essentially, when Donald Trump got elected, I mean, honestly, we even before then, but way before then, um, we were on an unstoppable train with the um, indoctrination of the neoliberal era of politics with Mr. Bill Clinton. You know, um, the Democrats had. Uh, a lot of uh, different times and moments to do something about the Supreme Court. They could have delayed uh, Amy Coney Barrett, or however you say your name, um, uh, appointation to the Supreme Court. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she should have retired so he could have appointed somebody new. Because remember, when she died, Donald Trump replaced her with um, Miss Amy Coney Barrett. And they could also take steps to expand the court. They could take steps to enact term limits. Within the realm of what's legal, they could take steps to apprehend the Supreme Court and not necessarily handicap them, but make it to where, you know, decisions by the Supreme Court aren't made. Since that's the one like overturning the eviction moratorium, which will hurt a lot of people. They can make a lot of people's lives much better and much easier by exercising the power that they actually have. But they just sit to the wayside and they never do nothing and they're incredibly weak 
and the Republicans are the exact opposite. They're incredibly strong and they fight for everything. I mean, the shit that they're fighting for is absolutely terrible and it's horrible and it's going to hurt a lot of people. But the fact of the matter is they're dogs, man. The rules. They go out and get what they want. The Democrats don't do that. And that's, I mean, they're partly to blame. They're, they're partly to blame. I mean, Trump came in for four years and put a lot of these far right Republican judges. I mean, Donald Trump got elected because the Democrats are so trash. Hillary Clinton had no message. They screwed Bernie Sanders over. So, I mean, this is largely their fault. You can't even put all the blame on the Republicans. And I can't believe I almost ended the video without stating that simple fact that everybody should know. But at the end of the day, this is a horrible bill. It's completely anti-freedom. And it, you know, it as Joe Biden alluded to, it deputizes citizens to be able to sue you, even the damn Uber driver, to, for taking somebody to get an abortion. And that is incredibly sad, if I do say so myself.